Welcome back to Watch World Studio. What I've got for you today is Chicago Express, the classic 2007 train game from Queen Games. It's an economic game about operating railway companies. It uses the themes from 18xx train games, but it's streamlined. It has simplified rules and is more suitable for general board gamers. Uh, as with most of these games, uh, the theme is the railroad expansion in the 19th century America. Uh, players are trying to make their most money by investing in railway companies and generating, uh, sorry, and operating them as they develop westward towards Chicago. So we're starting here on the eastern seaboard and moving towards Chicago. The key mechanisms are auctions and shareholding and route building and there's a little bit of area control. The rules are short and they're really quite simple. They're fairly consistent, there are only a couple of uh, exceptions and in the main uh, they feel pretty intuitive. This is a deep game though, uh, it's highly interactive and it's very confrontational. Table position can matter but there's no luck at all in the game. So this is going to be a full review of how the game works and what we think of it, whatever shortcomings we found so you can decide if it's for you. Uh, we've split the video up into episodes and you can choose to watch whichever ones are interesting to you. This episode is going to be an overview of the, the components and, and how the game's played, so it should be a buyer's guide. Then we've got another that takes a closer look at the rules, and if you're about to play the game, we hope that would prepare you to sit down and learn it with one another. We've done another one talking about strategy and tactics and why the game's so enduring, and we did a whole episode explaining what a train game actually is, because let's face it, everybody wants to know. It was published in 2007 by Queen Games, designed by Harry Wu, with artwork by Michael Menzel. It's based on his own earlier version of the game, which was called Wabash Cannonball, and it had been published by Winsome Games in 1999. There was an expansion in 2011 called Nickel Plate Road. This has been in print for 15 years now. It's still available uh, for about $45. Uh, we picked this one up secondhand at $20, uh, and we it was in a shopping expedition, you can watch. Um, and uh, honestly, this was about the best $20 I spent last year. Uh, it accommodates two to six players. Uh, it's very good indeed at either three or four players. You can't play it solo, and it's not good at five, and we don't recommend it at either two or six. Uh, sorry, but that's true. Game length is about 15 to 20 minutes per player. The setup and teardowns about five minutes each way. So it's going to be a comfortable hour to an hour and a half, depending on your player count. Okay, this is a description of the components, so I can describe the game, and uh, later I'll be able to talk about the component design and their uh, production quality. Uh, what we've got first is a large, um, hex grid map of North America, mainly the Great Lakes area here, look, uh, and it's stretching from uh, New York on the eastern seaboard through to Chicago there in the Midwest and uh, down as far as um, Charleston and uh, Richmond there. So we've got starting positions for each of the railway companies here, look, um, and we've got various cities uh, in the region including uh, these which are called industrial cities um, and you can see that each hex is marked uh, with the cost to lay track and uh, that these costs vary according to the terrain. You can see look three, two, four, three there again, one across the plains here. Now we've got a track around the edge of the board which is going to show the value of the companies and uh, we get these um, lap markers in case you've, uh, the, the company's value exceeds 50. Um, we've never ever used those in about 40 games, <laughs> but, but I suppose it might happen. Now a unique aspect of the board is these dials. Um, you can see they're in the style of steam gauges and they're for tracking the actions that are available during the operating rounds. Players can pick from one of these three uh, actions, but there's only a limited number um, of each action before it hits the red there. Uh, players can either uh, auction a share, uh, develop a hex, or uh, build railway line, extend a line. Uh, then we have these company boards, um, which basically provides a place to keep the shares and the track markers. And they're printed on two sides with a different style, but they don't make any difference. Um, then we've got these uh, wooden building markers that show when a uh, hex has been developed um, using the develop action there. And the table here 
um, is actually just um, to provide extra space um, for the uh, industrial cities, uh, Detroit, Wheeling, and Pittsburgh, because you can put more than one uh, development marker uh, on these. So it's really just a way of uh, making extra space. Then we have track markers. Um, these are in the traditional but uh, rather confusing shape. Um, they're in the shape of locomotives, not tracks, but so it goes. Um, and you can see that we have them uh, in each of the different colors. Uh, there are different numbers for each of the railway companies. You see 19 here uh, for the Pennsylvania company, uh, 21 for the Baltimore, 23, and so on. Then we have uh, paper currency, which is in the usual uh, badly chosen denominations, uh, lots of it there. Uh, and the box, uh, which is strangely huge, and I think it could be half the depth. Um, it's also got this insert inside, which um, doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does nicely fit these uh, plastic boxes that I picked up at a 100 yen shop. That's a you know, dollar shop. Okay, so I'm going to give a summary of how the game is played now. Um, players can uh, auction shares, which will put money into the company and then they can use that money to develop routes uh, across the country. Um, they can also develop hexes, and both of those things would increase the value of the company here. Then when dividends are paid out, the players will receive a proportion of the uh, value of the company depending on the number of shares that they own. So uh, if the red company uh, was worth 21 and there were three shareholders, then they would each receive seven each. Uh, of course, if you have a majority and you had two shares and the other guy had one, then you'd get 14 and they'd only get seven. The game starts with an initial auction uh, and as I mentioned earlier in the component section, um, there are just uh, three available actions in subsequent rounds. Uh, auction a share, uh, build track or uh, develop a hex, represented by the uh, steam gauges there. Then each turn, a player can move one of the gauges a step to the right and optionally do the action too. Once the dials have reached the red, they can't be chosen again in that round. And when two of them hit the red, then, um, uh, then dividends are paid out. Then after the dividend is paid, um, the dials are reset. Um, Detroit uh, gets another building, increasing its value. Um, and the operating round begins again. It's quite common for players to move the dial but skip the action itself. And this is usually um, a way of triggering the dividend round. There's a couple of extra elements, which is that whenever a company's tracks reach Chicago, then that company only pays out another dividend to the shareholders. It's quite significant. And the first time that happens, it causes another railway company, the Wabash Railway Company, to enter the game. Um, that will start at Fort Worth and uh, the starting value would either be one or three depending on the state of the game. The game always ends after a dividend round and it can be triggered in one of several ways but it's usually uh, when any three companies are bereft of shares um, or they're bereft of markers. So any three companies short of shares or markers. Uh, then the final dividend would happen and then the game would end. And the player with the most cash money um, just cash, no bonus for uh, how many shares you own or what their face value was or what you paid for them. Just the cash money will decide the winner. So the game is about buying shares early at good prices, making that railway profitable and reaping the rewards. And a large part of the game's fascination is that uh, not only do players not know how much a share in a company is going to be worth, they actually can't know, at least until about the very last rounds. Uh, the right decisions are rarely knowable because all the elements are so closely coupled. So the rules are really quite simple, but this is a very far from simple game. And you know how it is. If it were a simple game, anyone could play it. And if anyone could play it, why would you want to play it? Okay, uh, let me talk a little bit about the components, but I should provide an apologetic by pointing out that this game is 15 years old and things have moved on a lot uh, in terms of game production in the last decade, particularly the last five years. This, it's also not an expensive game. I bought it, as I say, for $20 second hand and I've really had my value out of it. 
that said, I am an interface designer by trade, so I do have a few things uh, to say about the production quality. Um, so firstly, the map board. Uh, it's nicely printed. Um, colouring and illustration are okay. I think it's a little bit old-fashioned, perhaps. Um, the upgrade and uh, cost markers are a little bit confusing at first, but you do get used to it quite quickly. Um, I have a bit of a criticism that uh, the typography is a little bit uh, old school. I, I understand that they're trying to be evocative of uh, 19th century print styles, um, but it doesn't really do it for me. Uh, the development markers are these uh, wooden houses, and uh, they're perfectly fine, um, uh, nice style. And then we have the track markers, which are in the traditional locomotive shape, um, which is a bit confusing and a little bit too lightweight. I could do a bit more weight on these. Um, the steam gauge um, uh, action markers, um, central part of the game, it's great design, but the production's only adequate and uh, it's not great because they can easily be moved. Um, this sounds petty, but it isn't. Uh, every single game we play, and we've played it a lot, um, we've had these questions about, hang on, has that one been moved or not? It, it, there, there needs to be some um, you know, click or some means of clearly uh, telling whether or not you're in one section or another. A bit of blue tack, perhaps? And uh, like, uh, likewise, the company value track um, is an absolute pain. Um, the markings are too narrow for the counters, as you can see. So if you've got the counter on it, you can't see the number. Um, and the counters stack up and they fall off and you lose your position. Um, it's annoying. Uh, the box is okay. Um, for reasons I don't understand, it's about twice as deep as it really needs to be. Um, don't know what's going on there, and I don't really understand um, what this insert, uh, what's going on with this insert. Um, as I say, uh, it, it's, it happens that it fits these uh, cheap plastic boxes that I bought, and it may be that um, there was something in the game that I didn't get because I bought it second hand. Um, but either way, it's one of those that, if you were suitably inclined, you might cut it in half. You don't really need this much depth. Uh, the company charter board design, uh, it's fine. Um, they're just spaces to put the, um, the relevant bits. Um, having done that, I don't know why the Wabash Railway Company here is printed on the board. Um, I honestly think that um, game illustrators design the parts and then somebody else puts it together because I, I actually don't believe that, uh, that a good illustrator would do this when they've already done that. What this actually should be is somewhere else on a, on a fifth board, but you know, maybe it won't bother you as much as it bothers me. Uh, the currency is bloody awful. Um, you're going to swap these out for poker chips or something else as soon as you possibly can. Maybe currency cards from a different game. Um, yeah, nothing good to say about that, sorry. Um, so I do have a lot of complaints about the quality, but again, I've got to give some perspective here. I, I paid $20 for it. Um, it's an absolute criticism, so you know what you're getting if you buy the game for yourself. And it's usually about $45, and I think it's entirely acceptable for that price. The thing is that if they did a deluxe version for $90, I would buy it in an instant. So Queen Games, if you're listening, could we have the, uh, the bonus edition? Uh, I certainly would buy it. Okay, who is this game for? Well, uh, like the other train games we've looked at, we think it works well for a variety of different player personalities. So that's a real strong uh, point of these games. Is it a family game? Well, I think you can just about play it with family members that aren't gamers, but it'll be at the hard end of that spectrum. Um, it takes anybody several games to play it because uh, the balance between all of the elements is very, very fine. Um, you also need to house rule the auctions until everyone's at the same level, but I'll talk about that in another episode. You'll like it uh, if you enjoy auctions and estimating value. You'll like it if you like route building and area control. Uh, you'll like it if you enjoy semi-cooperative or partial alliances. And you'll absolutely love it if you like confrontational games. I'm really a war gamer at heart and I absolutely love this game. There's not a weapon or army or tank in it and it's brilliant. So those are the sort of people who will like the game, but there are those that won't. 
If you're the sort of player who wants to be left alone to gather your resources, do your engine building, a uh, multiplayer solitaire game like, for example, Wingspan, this probably isn't for you. Um, this is all about what the other players are doing. Um, and uh, if you like pursuing your own plans undisturbed, I think this is not really for you. Now as far as buying it, I think if you only had one cube rail game, then this would be the one you'd buy because it sits right in the center of all of the other games. But on the other hand, if you're a game collector and you want several uh, cube rail train games, I can see you might not want this one uh, because you'd probably want a variety that had different emphases and you'd maybe miss that one out. This, this one, you'd miss this one out. Um, Overall, I think it's one of the best games I've ever played. Uh, almost all of my criticisms are about the production, and um, I'm hard pushed to come up with a real criticism of the game. So this is the end of the first episode. Um, we will have uh, other episodes uh, in successive weeks and add links so you can find them easily. I hope you've enjoyed it.